thank you to Shiro Koi for your support on Patreon. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Following the Plot. New podcast, replacing all of the above, because uh, that 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 show just kept not being what I wanted it to be, and then uh, realized I didn't know what I wanted it to be. So now we are here. New show, new podcast with a new focus. This following the plot, named after the <laughs> bit of advice that I received, one of the first bits of advice I received upon playing visual novels. That is, when faced with any choice, branching paths. Follow the plot. What would be more interesting? Go with the thing. And despite my laundry going loud as fuck in the background, I hope you don't hear too much of that. Uh, <laughs> this is the the grand beginning. Uh, I almost called it a finale. Oh Christ! I hope not. Uh, this is the beginning, the debut of this show. It is more s- focused on storytelling. Now, it won't always be interviews, but there will always be a discussion about various aspects of storytelling, about stories in general, narratives. And I hope you enjoy it. I look very much forward to it. I have a bunch of ideas of how I want to do this. And I'm going to try, don't hold me to this, but I'm going to try to do this weekly. We'll see how that goes. It'll probably change. This very first episode is a mirror of sorts to the first episode of the interview format for all of the above. You know, it started as a radio show and bobbed about, bopped around until eventually became uh, an interview podcast, but then, uh, uh, you know, couldn't interview someone every fucking week, so <laughs> wound up talking about other shit and so on and so forth until it died. But the very first interview of that new format was with Shiro Koi, back when he was just the repeat guy. Hadn't branched out, hadn't worked on another visual novel in the public sphere. This was his shit. But now, all these years later, turns out we find out... <laughs> As we're talking in there, it was three years ago, as of recording, that we talked on camera for the first time. Uh, We have returned, once again, sans the uh, explicit material that was used uh, in the first one, hopefully to set up a bit more of a reasonable and less less, uh, explicit expectation of uh, episodes to follow. So, without further ado... Thank you for coming to join us on this very first episode, and please enjoy this interview with the developer, artist, soul, writer, fucking one-man band behind Repeat and Temptations Ballad, Shiro Koi. Shiro, how you doing? It's a me. I'm I'm doing. I'm I'm. Yes, you are. From what I've seen on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, I'm doing okay, you know, 2020, 2021, uh, everyone's favorite years, right? Oh, Yeehaw. Yeah. I think someone, it was, someone pointed out to me, not personally, but I, I saw it on like, on somewhere where it was like, when you realize that the year is literally 2021, like W O N 2021, the year, like we lost to 2020. Oh, Oh, uh, and what a loss it was. Ugh. Oh, fucking hell. Well, we're here, and uh, this is the first time we've done this. When when the fuck did the last one happen? At least a year, man. <laughs> it's got to be, because I mean, you've been on, I've, I've, I've interviewed you twice now. Once mm-hmm. by yourself, once, as you pointed out before we started recording, uh, as a group on mm-hmm. the... Uh, on the round table. Holy Christ. It was May 14th, 2018. Oh was, my. That was uh, I, the very first time happened. Uh, that, I was a different man back then. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, actually, I'm, I'm the same man, but just a little sadder now. <laughs> aren't we all? Uh, that is something to, to, to mention. Uh, that first interview, uh, it unintentionally set a tone uh, for the, <laughs> for oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I remember. <laughs> uh, for everybody else who came after me, I sincerely apologize. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not to be any 
butt pluggery happening on this recording. Uh, I thought it would spice things up a bit, you know, but uh, maybe you no, know, too spicy, too spicy. <laughs> you and I enjoyed it thoroughly uh, <laughs> on and off the recording. But you know, you know what the issue was, though? I went through all the comments uh, <laughs> on that video and one of them I recognized was like a high school friend of mine. <laughs> I was like, uh oh, so, uh-oh. sorry, Mariah, d- uh, pretend you didn't see this. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and she was so wholesome when I when we knew each other in high school too. I was like, "Ooh, this ain't good." <laughs> well, there's 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 no use hiding who you are and what you like from anyone. Anyone, you walk it up to true. anyone and just be like, "Hey, uh, like at ten inches or more, just fucking that instead of <laughs> hello, just start with that." <laughs> Um, Wait, what a nice breaker. Yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll definitely know that you're in with someone if they keep talking after that. Um, <laughs> but th- I remember there was, uh, it was like Dine or someone told me, Dine Wolf, he was like, someone said that they were surprised that he would go on that show because they, someone saw the first episode and assumed everyone was getting plugged while. <laughs> <laughs> you could, uh, uh, not the case. <laughs> <laughs> My sincerest apologies to Dian Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he came on the show. We had a great time. Uh, so it's, it, there's no reason to apologize. I had a great time. And just as you were the first one back then for the the interview version of all the above, you know, there were like seven different versions of that show. Now it's a whole new show. And we're starting <laughs> off right where we were, but hopefully with a little more, you know, uh, uh, natural fucking conversation. Because, you know, this is the third time we have talked on camera, uh, camera, quote unquote, because there's there's no face cam here. And I dare say that we have we know each other a little bit better uh, in the past three years. Mm -hmm. It's been pretty cool. It's been more than three years, at least. Right. Uh, We've chatted. Yeah, we've chatted. We've chatted. We've we've chatted. (laughs) (laughs) But, oh, man, in the past three years, you as a public figure have kind of changed your uh, what people know you for. Um, Because I remember it was it was back then. The, there was only a couple of sprites, a little bit of something, a little bit of ooh, what could this be? It really didn't seem, if I remember correctly, that there was anything concrete. You were the repeat guy. That was it. That was the whole shit. But now, yep. now something has changed, and that something is Temptations Ballad. Oh boy. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 why, why, why are you shrinking away, man? Well, no, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. But also, I'm in the middle of like trying to push out uh, update 2.2. Mm. Uh, no, 0.2.2. Mm. I, I don't know how I organize these updates. But uh, yeah, the stress levels have been high. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of ironic because if I recall, you started doing Temptations Ballad to escape the stress of repeat. Uh-huh. Well, I think over time, um, I've gotten more and more ambitious. If you've noticed, um, so on average, my repeat updates were like 15 to 20 pages each with like a few arts here and there. Um, it, it was consistent, but it was, it was consistently small. But with the Temptations Ballad updates, I'm making the th- all the 3D backgrounds. And uh, you've seen the last update where... It w- um, am I allowed to say spoilers? Spoilers for... Sure, go ahead. I mean, I haven't played the Patreon exclusive update, for the record. Uh, I was hoping you would so I can uh, uh, yap about it, but... Um, <laughs> so the Sid, the Sid uh, fight was, like, a pretty ambitious, like, just um, experiment to see if I can do fight scenes yeah. cooler. Mm-hmm. I dare say you'd su- you've succeeded. Uh, but that was just a trial. I was like, all right, cool. So um, in the Sid fight scene, it was just like a couple of slashes. You can see it was the stakes weren't very high. But then the update afterwards, you can probably tell by the cliffhanger, uh, stakes are significantly higher. And uh, the fight scene started off with like 25 planned illustrations, but then it grew 30 and then 35. And then like 
I've added like four new soundtracks into that. Uh, I double checked them, by the way. They should be <laughs> YouTube friendly. But <laughs> uh, I I got those um, the the problem tracks I got from like a royalty free website. But I guess they lied because what the fuck, man? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, oh man, it, I wouldn't even blame the website. I I put the blame squarely on YouTube on that one. Their copyright system is notoriously garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, we all know what YouTube is known for. Copyright. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Christ. But, yo, yeah, yeah I, I'm super looking forward to the new update. The only reason I haven't played it is because, you know, I mean, you know this because I was telling you about it. Uh, I just got back from a neurology appointment, and that is, that is the, like, third or fourth doctor's appointment I had just this week. Oh um, yeah, yeah. You know that shit's going south in your life when you're going to four different doctors in a week. Um, Ugh, four different doctors. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. It's I've, I'm uh, and that that this appointment just today spawned two more appointments and two tests and <laughs> at, and that uh, one of those appointments is going to be even more tests and so it's like yeah I'm. Uh, I, I feel you on the stress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, but this ain't about me. I wanted to, uh, before we uh, before we get too far away, we did mention since the, um, the we, uh, we mentioned how repeat has kind of been shelved for the moment in, in terms of Temptations Ballad, where you've, as you've mentioned, you've felt more uh, open to experimenting and being more ambitious, and holy shit, man, like... I remember I was there in the early days, not the early, early ass days. How long was repeat in development for before uh, I showed up and added my flavor of shit to it? I don't remember. I think it was about like a year and a half. Uh, you you came on after I reworked all the sprites once. Mm -hmm. And then I reworked more sprites like af after you joined. Like the original sprites, I have it somewhere in the depths of my Dropbox, but they look like garbage. <laughs> 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 and a few of the current sprites are still pretty garbage. Um, so my current plans are finish up Temptations Ballad 0.2.2. And then the rest of this year, I'm going to just spend updating a few sprites, redrawing uh, a few um, CGs in, temp uh, in repeat. Because um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but uh, my sense of anatomy was pretty bad back in the day, and I drew the penises backwards uh, on uh, on a few of the sex scenes. And hey, man, that's the whole the, the the joy of learning does not come from a lack of pain from realizing your mistakes. The joy of learning is finding the new ways to do it better. And when I say like night and day. The, the stuff that I saw in the very first builds that I was able to see of repeat, which was still serviceable. It was still, uh, you know, it was still entertaining and encapsulated and it captured my attention uh, and it and I wanted to know more and I was very interested. But looking at it now compared to the re latest build of Temptations Ballad, you have improved so much and that's not me saying that you were shit before you were good before you've gotten great sense I, I would say I was at least a little shit before <laughs> hey, man. I'm not gonna say it and I don't take kindly to someone insulting a friend of mine even if it's my friend saying it. <laughs> but thank no. you I, it, it's very heartwarming to hear uh, you know as an artist you, you go through waves of just like haha I'm, I'm pretty decent and then self esteem just plummets sometimes yeah trust yeah. me I fucking feel ya <laughs> but but you know um every time i put out an update i'm just like oh i can't wait to see if decker's gonna laugh at this dumb joke i made <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's worth it every time and that's incredibly flattering to me because you know i spend a lot of time thinking that all i do is basically read someone else's uh hard work and then you know, I get attention from it. I'm like, I, I, it just doesn't feel fair, you know? I'm going to give you a hard disagree on that one because um, as a creator, especially in uh, like visual novel spaces, feedback is good, but seeing someone read it out loud and then react to it like earnestly is 
such a rewarding experience, you know? Like, sometimes I see comments, and they're like, oh, I love your visual novel, and it's like, it's very good, but seeing someone actually play it and then laugh at all the stupid jokes and maybe <laughs> uh, cry in a certain, if, a few areas, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing my job right. <laughs> it's very rewarding. And also, sometimes you give me critiques, and I, ch I get some... Uh, uh, typo fixes here and there, and it, it's all very helpful in the whole development cycle. <laughs> it's helpful in the whole. I, I was like, what the hell? No, yep. yeah. I uh, I appreciate that. I really, really do. And, um, ah, shit. <laughs> We've done the bit where we, we, where we thank each other way too early. Now we got to transition out of this and keep talking for 40 minutes. <laughs> we fucked ourselves. No, uh, <laughs> But it is good to hear. I know a lot of people have been asking about, um, you know, what's going on with repeat. Is it is it done? Is it on hiatus? So you're you're doing housekeeping updates. Um, and you said for the rest of the year you're doing you're updating some sprites, reworking some stuff, and I I think that's great. I mean that's one of the challenges of being a developer with this kind of cycle, right? Developing incrementally and publicly, mm -hmm. as you know very well from. And I think this happened since the last time we talked, the rework of the Owen route. Oh, right. Yeah. The original Owen route where Owen shows up for f maybe 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you had people who were so... Uh, and, and this is this the, the, the level of entitlement that people had demanding a way to access the old route when you, the creator and author, is saying, this is not what I want for my characters. I'm going to work hard to change it and improve it. Like, we, I've seen that in a couple other games. H how does that hit you? Does it feel like entitlement or does it feel like an adoring fan base just loving everything you do? Well, from what I've seen, experienced so far, I've never had any like super rude or entitled like messages or anything about Owen's route. Mostly, it was just confusion. Like, oh, it was going pretty, pretty good. I, I like that sex scene with Samuel out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, why well, did change it? And I, I explained my stance. I'm like, hey, this is Owen's route. But Owen just shows up like the last 15 minutes of it, and he, you don't really experience it's. It felt more like Ginny, Ginny's uh, little little escapade instead of just spending time with Owen. Yeah. And uh, the whole direction wasn't what I want, we want to go for. So I explained that, and most people get it. They're like, okay, cool. But I still really liked what you did before. Is there any way to to experience it as like a little, um, whatchamacallit, Easter egg? Yeah. Yeah, and I put that in there, like a five of repeat when... Uh, Echo asks you what your wish is. You can type in Owen cut content and you can experience the uh, the old Owen route as really? far as it went. Yeah. Is it but, all one word or, or what? Uh, no, it's uh, with spaces. Okay. But in exchange, I know why most people want to play it and that's because of the Samuel sex scene. So when you type in Owen cut content, the character's name is changed to... Uh, I think it's like cinnamon thought or something. Uh, <laughs> it was just like my little fuck you to all y'all. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I love you by the way, but I need to have yeah, my fun sometimes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Especially since like, I mean, you, you, we went through all this trouble to make the whole thing available when one, you could just download an older build. Like those don't go away. They exist. And also, if you keep the art in the game, if you're just there for the sex scene, you can fucking find it. It's free. Like, but you that is above, true. Yeah, but you went above and beyond to 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 cater to the people who were really wanting to have that thing. Uh, but you get a little dig at the fact that, like, hey man, <laughs> this is I know my shit. Here. Yeah, this is my <laughs> shit. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. But now, yeah, that's. Ah oh, man, I'm glad for that. I'm glad that you got a, a little bit of a, a little bit of keep in there. But since then, uh, I re I remember when I I believe the first sprite I ever saw, or at least remember from the teases you started doing of Temptations Ballad before really anyone knew what the hell it was. You know, it mm -hmm. it was just sort of like, what the fuck's going on with this? Um, it was uh Rainier Orca Man. Uh, Rainier, 
Did I draw him? Is that my first one? I thought it was... I, uh... I doubt it was the first one, in all honesty. The first one was probably, like, Cole or Sid. Yeah. But uh, the first one I remember is Rainier, because I was like, what the hell? Because uh, Reapy doesn't have any uh, 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 amphibians. Uh, that is true, because I was... <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to keep it into facial structures. I was good at drawing, so I kept, played it safe. Hey, man, it's fine. It's fine. Everyone's got their <laughs> styles and it evolves over time. Um, so I remember seeing that and thinking like, what the f This is definitely going to be different. And boy, howdy, is it? Like, not only is it, you know, a different, uh, uh, a different genre, a different tone, it doesn't have a central, uh, like, you could say, do you consider Cole to be the main character or one of the three main characters? Uh, he is the main of the three main characters, uh, but I f like to think that everybody else plays like an equally important role in the story. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not first person. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's kind of like uh, the you get a trio of anime characters and one of them's the protag, but you know if... He's useless on his own. <laughs> you know how it goes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I get that. Um, yeah, I mean, the whole latest fucking... Uh, the whole latest arc in My Hero is about how Deku can't do shit by himself. Um, ah, the, the Broccoli Boy. I remember yeah, that anime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that obscure anime known as My, My Hero Academia, something like that. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's my favorite show. Or at least it was. I think I think a new show has taken my favorite show. What's your favorite Ooh. show? Show? Uh, depends on whatever I'm watching right now. Right now, I'm going through Castlevania, the Netflix animated Ooh, series. I Originally, I... I highly recommend. At first, when I saw like trailers for it, I was like, oh, "Okay, it's another anime with like choppy, gory, bloody stuff, whatever." <laughs> and then I saw a clip on on YouTube of um, Isaac from Castlevania, and he's having like this deep philosophical talk with one of his night creatures, and I, I was I was like captivated. The dialogue was so good, and I was like, "Wait a second, this is good writing. What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, you know, like, <laughs> so I, I, I read Netflix show. Yeah, so I restarted my Netflix uh, subscription and just for Castlevania, which is great. Uh, another show that I'm like deep into right now is The Good Place. Um, hey, I've heard of that. It's so good. It's like right up my alley because you know my writing style is all like campy, funny, goofy stuff, but occasionally with like hard hitting feelings. So uh, really good. Would recommend. Both very philosophical, weirdly enough. <laughs> Hey, man, that's fair. I like a little bit of philosophy. I mean, that that's one of the things that, like, if we're talking uh, to to segue back to the topics is, uh, you know, repeat and Temptations Ballad, it's, you know, th I've been fighting it pretty much ever since I started doing the re uh, reading these visual novels and especially, you know, repeat and extracurricular activities were the first two. Um, I've been fighting the uh, the people who would basically shelve it as a furry porn game you know that's all it is um and uh i i've been fighting against people who would who would limit it because there are central themes and uh higher questions and morality plays and all of these different kinds of aspects about society about hierarchy of power and all these different uh, themes that when you just limit it to the sex stuff and the sex stuff is important to the story. You know, occasionally it feels a bit gratuitous, um, <laughs> but it plays a role just as important as any other theme. Um, and I believe we talked last time about what it is like to feel limited to uh, people's uh, expectations of just uh, physicality. Have you found that to have tapered off? in the years that you've been working on Temptations Ballad, or uh, has it kind of maintained a little bit? Uh, you mean the thing where uh, people dismiss it because it's porn? Uh, I feel like it's gotten less so because there's been more visual novels out lately, and people have seen what the the genre <laughs> genre uh, can do. <laughs> yeah. Um, because, you know, there's Tennis Ace, there's uh, Ad Astra, uh, there's e all, all the Echo Project stuff. Uh, none of which that I have played yet. I, it's, uh, I need You're to play. Busy. You're busy, man. Yeah, but I'm like, 
like people have seen what how great uh, the things that uh, visual novels can do. So I think people are generally more open nowadays to like deeper writing uh, in visual. Uh, I'm talking about good writing while my brain's struggling for words. This is great. You're you're not writing, you're talking. It's different. But no, I totally feel you. Uh, The expectations have shifted because people are more familiar with the, with the medium and what it can do. I, it, it, I know you don't like the, the, oh, don't you feel old now kind of stuff, but like, isn't it odd to be two people who've been, who are kind of in an era of visual novels to see it change so dramatically yeah, I remember the scene back in the day. Um, oh God, I do feel old. Uh, <laughs> but you're I remember not, you're, you're young and vigorous and goddamn fuckable. What what do you remember? Were well, you were about to say something? <laughs> uh, God, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> well, um, uh, so I remember in the beginning what what games were there? Uh, more Natsu, which uh, mm, the more. <laughs> As time goes on, it's really aged. Uh, it, it's aging like milk. <laughs> yeah, it's well, I, I can't like be completely hateful towards No More Natsu because it's what got me into visual novels. But it's a relic of its time. But um, yeah. in the beginning, there was More Natsu, Blackgate, uh, Lagoon Lounge, Lagoon Lounge, uh, and all that good stuff. And uh, now we just have more options, and people feel like, oh, I don't need to be a quote-unquote gay furry visual novel i can be a visual novel that uh delves into politics or or like high fantasy uh urban fantasy like there's so many ways you can take gay visual novels besides like a school setting (laughs) with a bunch of cute boys (laughs) which uh no 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 shit to anyone who does that it's really good but um, I feel like nowadays people feel more free to explore a little more in their settings and worlds. Yeah, even the even the as you're an example of this, obviously, uh, even the authors of some of the transitionary from the old to the new generation of uh, visual novels is uh, feeling more open because I've heard from a, a number of people who <clears throat> worked on some of the not like. There's the the generation of Morinatsu and Lagoon Lounge and all that, and then there's the generation of like uh, extracurricular activities, Echo, Repeat, you know all them, and then um, now you get um, the expanded Echo Verse, Temptations Ballad, Password, you know a whole slew of new ones. Um, and you're an example. Howley is also there of people who became established in kind of a safer, more traditional, uh, and kind of more expect expected medium but then uh it branched out you went into fantasy uh howley who is uh who was the prime primary author of echo and has basically uh delegated that out to other writers uh and now primarily works on the adastra stuff so he moved into sci-fi and then dine wolf from extracurricular activities he's told me that he's really thinking that his next project is going to be a fantasy game as opposed to you know college gay romance you know um Mm. so it it's really fun to see all the new authors that are coming out uh some that are uh less cool than others but you know a lot of really (laughs) cool ones uh Uh most of them are cool from uh, what i hear (laughs) Uh, there aren't any uh dedicated uh, gay furry vision novel drama channels on youtube yet so i'm assuming i'm assuming we're good so far (laughs) there's one video who 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 went into it and it keeps popping up on my fucking twitter page god but no no it (laughs) um no the the to see all the the new uh, authors that are popping up, the the younger ones that are still learning uh, and aren't aren't quite there yet, but they're working on it. To all the people who were inspired by, um, you know, one or two generations ago of of writers, um, I just played uh, here a little bit ago the first uh, the very first build I mean, of the very beginning of a new uh, visual novel called Burrows, and man. When seeing what point one builds can be now versus what point even point seven builds were back in the day, the medium has expanded so much and people have learned 
from all the hard work that that of the from the people who came before and the inspiration that came from them to make the medium so much bigger and you played a huge role in that and you continue to do so yeah, i wouldn't say i played a huge role i was just like another like person who was around when hey man <laughs> when... hey man i it it can feel one way being like in you're you're in your fucking work and you're doing it and it's like you said you haven't you don't really have time to look around and see the landscape and read everything you you can you get a gist but i my job is a professional observer of the medium <laughs> <laughs> i can tell you the the sight of seeing the repeat guy change mediums put their primary thing on hold to jump into this whole new endeavor to experiment and to go all out with animations and new styles and new art and new characters and all this other stuff a lot changed in the medium and in the community after that point because it really takes someone taking that leap for everyone else to feel like it's a safe way to go ah uh, thank you <laughs> it does really mean a lot uh i i uh my words don't word good when I feel mushy and warm inside, but uh, thank you. <laughs> no problem. We, we can we can transition to kind of a little more of a uh, a hard a hard not mushy topic. Not nothing. Whatever. I'll just go now. <laughs> no, yeah, it's very nice. Uh, it's it's very heartwarming, and I I really appreciate the the uh, <laughs> the warmness that you you've put into my heart right now. I'll put warmness in you. Anyway, uh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh for god's sake um huh? but no so moving on to temptations ballad we've 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 mentioned it we've talked about some of it going and making that leap you had an idea you got seemingly from what it sounded like from our conversations and how you've been talking about it and leading up to when you started to release public builds uh, you seemed really encapsulated with the idea of what Temptations Ballad is or wanted to be or anything like that. Can you speak to the process of making that decision to to shelve the thing you were known for and had been working on for years to pursue this new idea, this 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 whatever it could be? Um. So. I think one of the driving forces that made me change for a bit was um. I didn't want to be the repeat guy. <laughs> I want to be someone who uh, who wrote stories. And I thought, um, after working on repeat for years and years, I felt a little weighed down by um, by that goddamn four by three aspect ratio. Oh, Fuck. <laughs> Is that gonna change in the new housekeeping? It would take a lot of work. My dude, there are over 120 illustrated scenes in repeat. If I had to redo every single one of them, I would die instantly. <laughs> I mean, most of the new ones appear to be drawn in a 16 by 9 style. It wouldn't be all of them, save one or two. <laughs> uh, no, most of them were were uh, were like four four by three, unfortunately, yeah, which I'm, makes I'm... my life a little difficult. Uh... It's okay. Echo was four by three the entire time. You can. It's okay. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm glad I wasn't the only one who did the big dumb. But like, <laughs> uh, one of the dumb. most. You started before 16 by 9 was available. How is that dumb? Oh, it was no, I thought I just didn't know it was a thing, and I just pressed the default, and uh, oh, I was stuck I mean, with it. <laughs> extracurricular activities was 4 by 3 and it only did this, the change to 16 by 9 because they had a major and mandatory artist change, that they had to change everything anyway. I, honestly, I think in hindsight, that was probably a very smart of them to do. <laughs> oh. It was a circumstance. They didn't make the. They. I can't speak for for dying, but I can tell you that it was not a choice that was just an aesthetic one. It was personnel. It was a situation outside of the game. It was mandatory because they had to replace all the art, and so it was more taking the opportunity since you already have to do it. You did not have to do it, and I can't speak to whether or not he would have done it if he wasn't forced into it. Um. Yeah. That's. I think. Um. Overall, the change to from four by three to uh, was it sixteen by nine? Uh, yeah, um, that was one of the most freeing parts of making Temptations Ballad because uh, one of the changes I made to Temptations Ballad was that um, I wanted a bigger cast of characters, 
And the thing with a 4 by 3 aspect ratio is you can only fit like two or three characters on screen at once. Yeah. And like... <laughs> <laughs> Constantly popping in and out, you know? Mm-hmm. And you can't have the main character be on screen, uh, so it's all like first person. Uh, so yeah, I feel so free and <laughs> like alive now <laughs> with the upgrade. Um, but I guess I just want to change a pace with Temptations Ballad, you know? Um, yeah. Repeat is a story where I put a lot of myself into it. And sometimes writing... A, a lot of scenes are from, like, personal places. Yeah. And uh, while that is very important to me, and I've, I'm very happy with how things turned out, uh, it gets a little exhausting after a while to, like, just self-examine all the time every time I write my dumb gave for a visual novel so <laughs> i want i wanted dumb. to try something new yeah i uh, i i do feel you though i hmm i feel you i'll just I'll, I'll leave it at that i i can't speak to being in your situation specifically and that's the thing i i started tinkering with uh programming in renp because i have a bunch of ideas and all this other stuff but uh i i fear the cosmic karma That'll come from all the little uh, the typos that I've pointed out, or the little uh, <laughs> the, the little sprite movements that didn't seem quite right, or the whatever. You know, for every person and every time I've ever said something like that, if I put out any build of anything, I'm gonna get it so hard in the face. It's gonna fuck me up forever. I'm so terrified of it. But um, it's part of the experience. Some of y'all have been never. Some of y'all never got roasted by your art professor, and it shows. <laughs> <laughs> I never had an art professor. Ah, uh, good. Save some money. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I need is a vocal coach. Cause Christ alive, man. Um. But no. What? No, you you have such a pleasant voice. Like listening to you read my stuff is just like hella relaxing. Well, I, I I very much appreciate that. But but for the finer aspects of it, you know, I I, uh, I recently found that like the nerve the nerves in my face are are fucked. And, oh yeah, and if I keep going the way I'm going, I'm gonna develop arthritis in my fucking jaw. And like I don't know I don't know where that fuck I don't even want to talk about where that goes. But um. Point is, I, I I need to get. I'm, I have a physical therapy appointment. That's another appointment I gotta go fucking do to uh, to figure out how to mouth good. Is, <laughs> oh man, if I want to learn how to mouth good, I should just ask you. But no, I, um, <laughs> I you've got good reviews. I'm just saying. No, um, but no, I for uh, for Temptations Ballad to have been such a, a a breath of fresh air the animation stuff ren p does not seem the kind of program that's very um fun to work with when you have got this idea in your head and you've got to work it into the limitations of the program have you been uh struggling with trying to implement some of your ideas in ren p or has your years of experience uh really lended itself to making it easier for you i'm not gonna lie all my animations in ren p are like fucking brute forced i'm sure there's a more efficient way to do it but <laughs> i'm kind of just like here's what i know how to do all uh, right i'm just gonna code for uh this image to start and then stop and then the next se sequence to start and stop um I don't know if I know what I'm doing, but I'm just using the tools that I have hey, to make things happen. <laughs> if it works, it works. Um, mm. If you want, I could try to put you in contact with uh, another dev who has really smooth animations in their stuff. If you want to like pick their brain about it, uh, it's the person uh, who does uh, the Hayseed Knight. Ooh, um, I might check out their visual novel first and then message them. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it yeah. on it. Feel free. No, <laughs> <laughs> no the, the game is all uh, free uh, on itch, I believe. So uh, feel free if you ever get the time. But no, they, I've, I've seen in your um, in your in your image uh, parts in your uh, in, in your game files uh seeing all the different animations for like the the swinging of of the lanius for example is like s like three or four different fucking pictures and it's just and it looks like you just rapid fire and that's basically what animation is it's just pictures moving fast 
Yep, <laughs> basically. Um, but th- there are ways to make it like less painful, and I need to learn those ways. <laughs> well, I mean, if if anything has been shown by your journey as a developer, is that you're very good at learning how to do things and improving over time. Um, uh, thank you. Yeah. Um. So. Temptations ballad being different and and what and and more difficult to program. It, you're doing things that you uh, that never seemed to go in repeat. In terms, it just seemed like normal. Like the I call it the steal your resolve moments where you have the the solidarity that with Sid it's the fist and the smile for Artemy it's you know you, you, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the little, the little animation salutes and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Um, those happen pretty much right away. So those were a building block aspect to your presentation style. Uh, <laughs> where did that come from? Because that's not something I see very often elsewhere, and I think it works really well. Oh, thank you. Um, so I looked up other um, projects and genres that... Um, okay, so first of all, I'm a one-person team, so I had to acknowledge my limitations and be like, all right, I want personality-driven animations in this visual novel, but I need to keep it simple. So um, I think I saw this... Um, uh, what's my, what do you call it? Uh, you know the channel um, Playframe or whatever on YouTube? They do a lot of video game examinations of animation and whatnot. And their one video on Phoenix Wright was like super um, influential to me because they examined, oh, look at these sprites. They're super simple. A lot of it don't move. But like the parts that do move are exaggerated. They show a lot of personality and they're super efficient with what they draw and what they don't. And um, that's what really influenced my planning and style for uh, the little uh, sprites and animations that I made. Uh, that, yeah, now that you said that, that as soon as you said Phoenix Wright and you started talking, I was like, that fucking makes so much sense. Phoenix I, Wright is good, man. <laughs> it fucking is. I, I love the Phoenix Wright games and, and, and I can totally see the influence in it now. Holy <laughs> mm-hmm. shit, that's cool. Uh, yeah, Phoenix Wright, like... Man, they they do so good, with so, like so much with their and their sprites. Um, I used a lot of them from re- as reference when I design new sprites, because like their body postures, their their little blinks and whatnot, they're they're just so on point. Like they hit the emotion that they're going for like straight away, and it's great. Oh yeah, I mean that Phoenix Wright as a series started on the fucking Super Nintendo for God's sake. So like <laughs> they had to make a lot out of what little they had. <laughs> so that, that is so fucking cool that you mentioned that. Are there, um, any other notable, uh, uh, influences on various other aspects of it? Like the idea of switching from character to character, uh, when, when the party is separate, um, separate, good Lord. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, kind of like I'm not saying that the, the example of like Grand Theft Auto Five when you would get a campaign and it would go from character to character, but a lot I feel like a lot of games that have multiple main characters do that. But um, the way you do it, where it seems to go beat to beat, like there's not just a oh, and also at the same time, and you know, like it's, <laughs> you don't get a meanwhile dot 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 fucking scene transition or a to be continued screen it seems to except in the last update <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was like one hour earlier yeah and, and and that because it's so rare it really lends to like oh fuck this happened and it's gonna require some fucking build up because you got the surprise out of the way now you gotta fucking build into it and oh man i'm excited to see what it is <laughs> i'm really proud of update 2.1 so i'm really excited to see your reactions yeah. but um to answer your question uh if my brain can load up real quick um i guess i um so with part of that is i want to be different from repeat repeat is basically three or four separate storylines um 
hold separately. You know, there's Owen's route, there's Sissel's route, there's Philip's route, and there's Ginny's route that'll be uh, developed later. But <laughs> yeah. they all happen in separate times. They're all interconnected in some way, as you can see with um, Owen, Owen's background and uh, Philip's hints here and there. Like if, as you play through each route, you can see how they're interconnect interconnected and how events affected each character. But they're all told in separate timelines, you know. For Temptations Ballad, I wanted one coherent, linear story, but with three different character development arcs at the same time, which uh, has been difficult because um, sometimes juggling character relationships and their arcs all at the same time uh, makes the story feel a little bloated here and there. Like chapter three has felt a little long, <laughs> which uh, I, I don't know how to feel about. But um, overall, it's kept things more interesting, I feel. Yeah, um, I, I didn't want uh one thing that I didn't like about Reapy is sometimes you go into one character's route and other characters just kind of disappear into the background in the meantime. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I built these personalities and I'm going to use them. And yeah. that's what Temptations Ballad is for. Yeah, it, I, I like that it is a different kind of narrative because in, in the first in the the first and certainly I believe in the uh, in the round table, it was discussed about having a narrative around a malleable char- uh, main character where you kind of accidentally straddled the line between malleable main character and defined main character when it comes to Yuka. Yeah. And it really came down to the fact that you couldn't see him, but that was a limitation of the medium. Uh, and you could change his name, which was just a, a novice mistake that I believe mm-hmm. you, you mentioned. But now, uh, with Cole as the main of the main three, that's a defined character. There's, there's, there's yeah. nothing malleable about that motherfucker. Like that is it. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah, I, re- I remember watching like uh, another YouTuber play it, and when, it, when um, when Temptations Ballad first came out, and when Cole shows up, he's like, ah, oh, I can't name my character, and there, there was like a little. I was scared about it at first, but I feel like having a defined character really lets me. Do more with his story arc, you know? Also, about Cole, um, another thing I decided on when starting on Temptations Ballad was I wanted an asshole for a main character. <laughs> like, um, if you on look at all the characters stuff. from... Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> all the characters are repeat. Like, they have their, their issues and whatnot. But they're all good people. They make good decisions. And they, they're, they're not selfish when, when needed. But with Cole is like, I want an asshole because um, that makes character arcs a lot more satisfying, I feel. And yeah. also seeing an asshole character get his comeuppance is very satisfying in a way that I can't quite quantify. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it little, It's a catharsis that is desperately needed. Uh, and I feel like speaking of an asshole getting their comeuppance, and I promise this is not an innuendo. I'm going to I'm going to talk about Calder. Ah, uh, uh, you punished that guy seven ways to Sunday. Uh, <laughs> oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> uh, really? Like there's m- more after Elia? <laughs> um, Calder, I have another. He's kind of like a foil to Cole in that they're both kind of not great people. But Cole's had the support and love that he needed growing up, and Calder does not. And they're kind of, you can kind of see them um, as updates go on, they do grow and change. But, uh, um, how do I say this? The defining theme of Temptations Ballad is generational trauma. Like, you know, how parents experience trauma and passed on to their children as you can see by the chapter one where i introduce all three characters and their families one after another (laughs) yeah um (laughs) so yeah all of the main characters have um uh, the story just explores how their families affect them and how they have to take on the trauma that their parents experienced and cole there's his own whole boat bone breaker family and all the issues that uh, Marrow has, and Hamish. Uh, <laughs> there's, <laughs> but for Calder, um, he. 
So his he, him getting his comeuppance will uh, in the beginning will feel like jokish, and he's like, "Haha, you fucking asshole!" But later on, you're like, "Oh, that's why he's an asshole." Yeah, and then I mean, oh, I hope. Uh, mm, Hmm. I hope at some point I can make y'all feel bad for him in a little bit. I mean, you started with uh, with Agatha talking about his role in House of Shaughnessy. So, I mean, that's um, there is a little bit there. And that's what it kind of made um, just a hint of Elia's uh, uh, possessed fucking outburst. Um, uh, while awesome, it made it a slightly bittersweet because you did begin the process of making us be like, oh, fuck, Calder isn't just someone who had everything and chooses to be a prick about it. He's someone who had very little, is given a lot of shit, and whoa, surprise, surprise, turned out to be an asshole about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the idea of the juxtaposition between him and Cole, because Cole... Um, limited more by life but his circumstances are way more forgiving he has a billion friends in in the guild everyone you know goofs all around they they like him um he has an endlessly supporting father um mm-hmm. and you know despite that cole manages to through either uh uh naive choices or selfishness or whatever ruin some of the relationships you know the the tension with hamish uh which hamish is seemingly never perpetuated and is always trying his best and then of course with clyde that whole situation that got uh explained very well and that's what i like about the juxtaposition between the two because my personal head canon possibly canon i don't know there's nothing proving it is that uh you said calder yeah calder calder that's how you want it pronounced Mm-hmm. And uh, Cole's full name is Colody Bonebreaker. Uh, just... uh, okay. Yeah, I, I can go go through like why I named the characters the way they do later. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm gonna. I hope people catch on on the Easter eggs. <laughs> sure, sure, absolutely. I, I, all I was gonna say was that I, I personally think that there's a bit more of a connection between Calder. I'm, I'm trying Calder <laughs> and Cole. Uh, than just aesthetic and life journey. Um, <laughs> but okay, so let, let's go into the names since we are at the topic here. So <laughs> we got Calder O'Shaughnessy. Uh huh. O'Shaughnessy, I just thought sounded cool, but uh, Calder is named after a, uh artist who. Uh, uh, I, I got most of these names after books I've read in my childhood, so. <laughs> Um, if you read the Calder games, it's about um, an artist who created mob- mobiles, and uh, not sure how much I can talk about without spoiling things, so just leave it there. But uh, Cole's full name is Colodi, which I named after Carlo Colodi, the author of Pinocchio, because, you know, Pinocchio is a fucking liar. And also a puppet, so uh, I'll leave that there for uh, all. That's pitch perfect fucking naming. <laughs> um sometimes I'm I'm afraid like am I leaving just little hints or am I just yelling into a loudspeaker, hey, here's the next plot point, but <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, I, I I I think it's so fucking neat finding out the context of these these things and what the I thought I heard something behind me. Sorry. Um, I think it's so neat finding the the context to these these various aspects of of the characters and all this other stuff and so, we got Colody, mm-hmm. Bonebreaker, um, Marrow Bonebreaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, that uh, you know, obviously, we're talking Bone Marrow, Bonebreaker, something like that. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yep, they are hyenas, so you know it do be like. A, although I've hinted like, oh, Marrow probably named himself, and he sucks at names. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's he. He is the uh, Taser Face. Uh, except, <laughs> except he actually backed it up. <laughs> mm-hmm. He does break bones. <laughs> then you got Hamish, who is is Hamish's you know, like because they're. The, I don't know how it all works in terms of names and in in this is is it Hamish Bonebreaker or does Hamish have a different last name? I can't remember. I believe you went. He the, 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 currently does not have a last name. 
Okay. Uh, but uh, Hamish is from another favorite character of mine in the uh, childhood book series. Uh, Philip was actually uh, named after a. Uh, uh, I think um, you remember in chapter three, Sid reads a book for with Cole for the first time, and it's like. Um, it was about an owl flying through a fire, fire force fire. Yeah. Um, that's actually based. I pulled the words that he read, word for word, from my favorite book series. Uh, it's called The Guardians of Gahul. It's about those owls. Uh, yeah, a lot of character names I pulled from those because Philip is named after the Sooty Owl from Book Seven, uh, and it's just like I really like putting like my childhood into a bit bits of these characters. Grank, by the way, is also a main character in Book Nine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a name, Grank Stormborn. Yeah, um, that's a, that's a fucking name that'll stick out. Uh, anyone who's read The Guardians of Gahul will be like, Shiro, I know what you're fucking doing. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I haven't. Uh, you... <sighs> uh, let's see, what are cool names? Uh, Sid, I can't explain his name because it's a fucking spoiler. Uh, okay. You'll find out later. <laughs> yeah. Artemy. Artemy. Artemy, I wanted... How to pronounce the last name. Gautier. I got it right! Yeah! Yeehaw, you got him, boys. Um, <laughs> okay, I can't... Artemy just sounds cool, so that's why I used it, and also it sounds like... It sounds a little like Arthur, which, like, you know, she needs to pull a sword, sword from, a, from a rock and whatnot. She's the chosen one, etc., etc. Um, I know it started off pretty... pretty, uh... Cliche in the beginning. Oh, there's a chosen one, and she needs to do stuff. But I hope to uh, put the uh, use this trope and flip it on its head in the future. Oh, you already uh, have. I mean, the <laughs> idea of making a chosen one be someone who, you know, it's a it's a title, a well known title. It's not some vague prophecy. There's only one in existence. You know, it's a title that moves down and down and down, uh, down the line of history. Uh, and also, it's someone that it's almost a political title. Like, it, it's treated as a, a, a status. Like, if the chosen one is seen to be embarrassing, that title can be taken away. Like, that that that's different. That's a very <laughs> different thing. And also having someone who... Um, it's a... It's dissecting the idea of being a chosen one. Because you have Artemy, who is a good person, but has been sheltered and abused and just put through this absolutely horrific... Forced minimalism style uh, of life, where nothing you have is for you. It's all for the church. It's all for the greater good. Any pleasure is wrong, uh, and she's slowly uh, getting out of that. Um, you know, and constantly under threat of losing everything she has ever known to be her life, which is being the chosen one. And even then, uh, as was told with the with the story of the candle. Uh, even that, even the very beginning was shaky. So, uh, I I do think you have dissected and flipped the the cliche on its head to make it its own unique thing already. And I can't. I'm more, I'm very excited to see where we go from there. Thank you. I'm I'm, I'm glad it's it's uh, it's stayed interesting after a while because if you haven't noticed, most of my writing stories um I start off with like a pretty like common trope and then I try to define it from there. And yeah, I'm I'm always worried it might not be come off as interesting as I hoped it would, but I'm glad it's going well so far. But um, I guess I want to flip this inter this little podcast back on its head and ask you a few things. Like, what do you like uh, um, the most about Temptations Ballad so far? The most, like um, any interesting storylines, tidbits, character stuff, you know, I that kind of jazz. I was gonna say I can guarantee it ain't gonna be just one thing. You ask me what <laughs> I like about Temptations Ballad. I I love how not self-important it seems to be trying to be. <laughs> and let me figure out, let me dissect what the hell that gargle mesh of English was. I, I think very highly of the themes that you are putting in the characters uh, at the center of Temptation Battle, the main three. I think very highly of the overarching themes of the story and of the society you are building. And I like very much that the story isn't beating you over the fucking head about the how important the themes are. You're <laughs> allowing it to be fun. You're allowing it to be interesting, but also entertaining. Because 
I don't know when this started. What the hell? Sorry, there people going nuts outside, but that's normal. I Oof. live in Chicago. But anyway, <laughs> what I what I absolutely love about I, I, oh yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. I don't know when it started, but there was there's this been this shift lately in fantasy storytelling that it has to be gritty and serious, and this is the story of a triumph amongst evil, and and no one's allowed to smile and. <laughs> and, and anytime something slightly breaks that everyone flips their shit and they're like oh that's not realistic why are the people in the hobbit having fun everyone's <laughs> gonna die and it's like it's because it's not because it's not allowed to have fun it's because the hobbit was trying to be five different things and none of them worked <laughs> however you have managed to craft a very compelling story about characters in a world that is at the brink of some shit. There's an intrigue, there's a mystery, a whodunit, and you have characters that are interesting and are talking about very specific and relatable aspects of trauma, of parental expectation, about trying to be who you are against all odds and against all pressures, and yet... You get to fucking enjoy reading it instead of <laughs> feeling like you're being lectured to about your feelings. Yeah, I think um one of the things I I really um oh god, I need more coffee. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, um yeah, the the things um I always try to add a few jokes here and there and just have fun because, you know, stories are supposed to be fun. Like, I, you can listen to a philosophy le lecture about the importance of raising your children right, and yeah, yeah, I can do that, or I can have fun with this, like, dumb D&D &D story. Speaking of which, uh, <laughs> I was binge-watching a bunch of D&D &D podcasts uh, while I was writing Temptations Ballad, so that's probably where all the, all the like, um... If you haven't consumed any D and D uh, media, I highly recommend Fantasy High. That's one of my favorite. Um, the thing that got me into D and D. But it's like they managed to tell a deep story about coming of age, and and um, and fuck capitalism and <laughs> <laughs> and like I self like self worth and whatnot. But also, all the players in the game are just like having a great time and being like being um have having fun with the world they have yeah um and yeah it's it's really good one of the you know one of my one of my fun headcanon things to do is there are a lot of stories that are based with um D, D as like the the uh the 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 foundation of kind of how it's being told with the stats and with the spells and the various kinds of things that can be done in a D, &D setting um when you take vastly different stories that are based with that and consider them within the same universe, you get some really, <laughs> really interesting combinations. Like take, you know, we got Temptations Ballad uh -huh. and Baldur's Gate. Um, I've never played Baldur's Gate, but uh... it's in the, it's it's in the world of D&D. &D. Oh uh, boy! <laughs> <laughs> and I I also really like that. There's I could expound I could. I could speak to what I like about Temptations Ballad until it was blue in the face, and then I would only barely scratch the surface. It has jumped the rankings of what of my favorite visual novels so much so that I need to redo the list. Like, cause I, I don't know, I don't know where it is now, but I know it's in contention for number one. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> And that's not to say anything about repeat, which is also very highly rated, very much enjoyed. And I look forward to seeing it return when you are ready, because I think something that is an intangible and, and I'll, I'll cap it off there, an intangible thing that I enjoy incredibly so about both Temptations Ballad and Repeat is the sense that it's it's the author's voice. You know, there's a lot of theories about death of the author and how much you can put into it and this mm -hmm. development cycle that, uh, you know, it's public and changes and things happen like that that uh, 
force someone to keep in mind who's making it and why. But there is an intangible something behind the storytelling in both Repeat and Temptations Ballad that is endlessly compelling and... I, I don't know that could it could ever be duplicated. I, it can't be duplicated, and I don't know if I could properly explain it, but that, to me, is the biggest factor in why I love these stories. Um, because if you have that voice of the author... Because if you wanted to be a cynical piece of shit, you could just crank out some fucking whatever, I don't care anymore, like, whatever... <laughs> But you don't do that. You reached a point with repeat where you needed to take a break from it, and you did. There are not a lot of people in the creative sphere that could even think of doing that, but you did it. That's not so- gonna lie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so d- dropping repeat to start a new visual novel was like the scariest fucking time for me. <laughs> I was like, oh no, is this gonna be a dud? Am I gonna release an update and nobody plays it? But uh, thank you. It's 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 so like heartwarming to hear you uh, enjoy the things that I write. Yeah, and it, it speaks a lot to your character that that terrifying moment of I'm gonna take the thing that people like and know me for. I'm going to put it away because I know that I cannot do it justice right now. And I want to do this other thing that I want to enjoy and I hope other people do, but is going to be starting from scratch. And you took that leap, you made that bet, and you succeeded beyond any expectation to the point where there are people who have played and enjoyed Temptations Ballad thoroughly who don't even know that repeat is a thing. You have new people. You don't just have the people that are waiting for repeat to show up. You have new people that have come along and are enjoying it. And I think that author's voice, the 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 voice of someone who knows when to put themselves into it and is willing to spend as many hours as you do on the writing and the coding and the art and everything that is the part i like the most well, thank you I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm feeling all mushy and, and warm again <laughs> well uh we, oh. have reached, we have reached an hour so uh i want to try to keep these around the one hour mark uh <laughs> do the two and a half hour long fucking marathons that we uh, did before so i'll leave you with this last question mm-hmm. is mave osmia trans Maeve Osmia is not trans. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Um, I is gone. <laughs> uh, I'm just bad at drawing women sometimes. <laughs> That's not no no. No. <laughs> when I felt when I designed Maeve, I was like, all right. No, I, I I was I did sketches of her on stream on my Discord, and um, I was like, you know, all the women that I draw, none of them have boobs. <laughs> <laughs> None of them got the, got the big honkers because I don't know how to draw boobs. <laughs> you know, that's not what I was referring to. But I, I gave her noticeable visual boobs. I know. <laughs> my my head my my theory on that aspect was not based in an aesthetic choice because uh, uh, if we're talking aesthetics, I'm I'm trans and. I still get people misgendering me because there's nothing about this 400 pound, six foot two deep voiced motherfucker that seems like a woman. (laughs) But I still am a transgender female now. And so that's what I'm what I'm getting at here is I want to stress that it wasn't just like, is this woman because there's no bedonkers? Like, no, I, you know, it's not, it's not where I was going with it. It was just a lighthearted thing. For some reason, I got it in my head that it might be an interesting aspect of storytelling, uh, but whatever. It, uh, it was. Well, no, I do have a, I do have a trans character in uh, Graham from Repeat. So there's the play. Uh, yeah. Uh, I do want some more trans representation in my game, but I don't want it to be like. Yeah. Uh, like a front and center thing is just should be natural. You know, some people just exist, you know, exactly. Exactly. And like, you don't want, it's a risk thing, right? Like you don't (laughs) want to ever seem like you're adding someone as trans 
just because you want to fulfill a diversity quota, but at the same time, you don't want to go over and abound when it does seem pertinent to a story to hammer it home that this is the thing because characters are more than just the aspects of those characters. Mm-hmm. But there are more gay characters in my games than... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I need to fill that quota, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed there's a, there's a, there's a few. There's a few... No, uh, no. <laughs> There's an awful lot of himbos in this game. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if it's fun, it's fun, and that's all that has to be. Mm-hmm. Um, are there any questions left that you wanted to ask me by chance? Uh, who do you think the hooded figure is? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I'm going to hedge and say that I have a few guesses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there are a few suspects on my uh, my list. Uh, some of them more serious than others. Um, mm-hmm. I do not currently have enough confidence to finger a specific person, but uh, uh, our intrepid and nervous prince is on the list, mm-hmm. uh, as is Maeve, uh, as is uh, uh, Rennet. Because he's trying to over sodium the fucking world with his cheesy bread. Um, Agatha's on the list. Mm-hmm. Uh, Calder's on the list, obviously. Uh, he seems sure. very confident. Yeah, I don't. Th- I he's he's low on the list. I don't think he could pull it off. Um, <laughs> Uh, but if you go for the swerve, if you want the ultimate swerve, the ultimate swerve is Hamish. I, mm. there, is, there is no chance, there isn't a snowball's chance in the south of Hades that the hooded figure is Hamish. But that would be the biggest possible swerve without being totally unbelievable. And he's a bit too tall and also, uh, mm, hey, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, if there's there's a thousand reasons why it couldn't be and only a couple of possible theories as to how it could be. Uh, and so that's why I'm saying it's the biggest what the fuck, what kind of <laughs> twist that there could be without it being 100% unbelievable, like, like making it someone who is in the room or something like that. But like, yeah, no, it's... Uh, I I don't I <laughs> I don't I personally think that the best bet is that the hooded figure is someone we haven't talked to much or at all yet. Mm-hmm. Or it's Wes. <laughs> Uh, um, he's too a cowboy shooty shooty you can probably tell by his accent <laughs> oh god that fucking over the top fucking cowboy accent that that's a lighthearted way to end this off on if i may um you've had your opinions on voices i've done in the past herschel um <laughs> can i get a top and bottom favorites and least favorite uh out of the voices i have done in temptations ballad thus far you do a m- fantastic job of marrow. Like my God, that that uh, that Scottish, uh, oh yeah, angry angry I man. It's I so was going to call you a good boy in this podcast, and I forgot to do it. And Marrow's no, you, you still got a chance. Well, I'm not going to do it right now. It's uh, going to be diegetic. All right, but um, the lower on the list um would be Hamish. <laughs> not to be mean, but uh, in my head, I've I um. I've always imagined Hamish to be more of a calm, like very even, even tempered kind of kind of voice. And uh, you make him sound like Severus Snape from Harry Potter. (laughs) (laughs) On occasion. Um, Alan Rickman's voice was very smooth and calm. Yeah, but he also made you want to punch him. So there's a. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Uh, that's good to know. That's good to know. Well, mm-hmm. But I love all your voice work. You you breathe so much life in the characters. It's mm. great. Ah uh, man, I I I do what I do, but it would be nothing without the what it what was written. So thank you for being here. Thank you for all the hard work that you do. And uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out a way to make it natural to say good boy in that fucking voice Um, (laughs) but it's not fucking working i don't know you'll have another chance in the future i'm sure (laughs) Uh, yeah one day i'll just fucking call you up out of nowhere and fucking do it but uh 
thank you for being here and talking to me uh, again. Uh, I hope we get to do this again soon. Uh, mm-hmm. Always enjoy talking to you. Um, and uh, for all those who watched, uh, thank y'all for uh, for listening and being here with us. Um, for the question to prove that people made it all the way to the end, some sort of trivial kind of lighthearted question, what would you like to ask of the audience uh, to prove that they made it all the way to the end of the interview? Uh, oh boy. Uh, mm, I need more coffee to think of good questions. Uh, don't, don't have to be good. Just think of something off the top of your head. What is your favorite kind of coffee? And do you add sugar to it? There is a correct and incorrect answer. <laughs> <laughs> Philip is watching. Um, no, I'm watching. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite coffee? Well, if you asked a question, might as well answer it. Oh, uh, I really like my lattes with no sugar, but also I'm lactose intolerant, so I gotta mix some of that almond titty milk in there. <laughs> nice. Well, I feel like uh, uh, I don't drink coffee, so that's my answer. I gotta wrap this up now. Thank you for talking. I'll talk oh. to you later. Thank you everyone for watching. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Love y'all. Bye. Bye.